So welcome to another war game review from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today we're taking a look at a brand new game from Multiman Publishing, MMP, uh, and that is BCS Aracord. Uh, this particular video, and we have a sponsorship deal with Noble Knight, mm -hmm. so we're very appreciative for them for supporting us. Uh, this is currently sold out on their website, but they do have other BCS games on there, uh, things like Brazen Chariots, which I have on my shelf, uh, Panzer's Last Stand, and there's, there's a few others in the series. So this series. This was the fifth in the series, I think, right? Yeah, so check out uh, Noble Knight Games. You've bought more games from them before, and you will buy from them in the future, but uh, this is, that's a good place where you can pick those up. Thank you very much to them. But this is a two-player uh, World War II... <clears throat> I want to say it's operational game, but... Uh, BCS, it's a smaller scale than normal. Yeah, so BCS stands for Battalion Combat Series. So most of your units are battalion size. Or so, company. Yeah, but... some, some of them are company sized. Um, but that's, that's I think, battalion's like the largest level stuff that you have. You don't have any bigger than that in this. And so the, the map scale is one hex is one kilometer. And so your, your onboard artillery has like a measurable range on it mm -hmm. uh and it's not you know well and it's not range based on the type or no it it is the range of a spotter so you you potentially could have an hq eight or ten hexes back have a spotter up and a spotter just as any basically good order unit that's within two or three of the target so it effectively would have a 12 to 15 kilometer range and i i think that yeah, and you're like that feels right. That's your hex depending on. Whereas you know, so many other games like we play a bunch of SCS games, and it's like the artillery is like three or four hexes at most, or right. it's like only adjacent because it's yeah, such yeah, a, yeah. a large high scale. Yeah. Or it's tactical level stuff where it's like it can touch anywhere on the board because it's you know such a yeah. small closed in scale. Yeah. Uh, so this it was it was interesting because I don't know if we play a lot of games at this size and scale. Well, I mean, we we play a lot of tactical games, but that not at this scale. You're not right. like this. It, it's it's a it's a more medium scale, I guess, is what I would a mid scale. Yeah, this is very is much what I would say in between a lot of the types of games that we mm -hmm. do play and that are very popular around. And, and frankly, because of that, I feel like it felt very fresh. Yeah, no, yeah, interesting, unique. Really kind of energized me after playing it. I, I, I really enjoyed this system. Well, and spoiler alert. Yeah, this is but. our first ever BCS game that we yeah. played. Yeah. I've had Brazen Chariots sat on my shelf for probably six months or a year. And, and I've drooled over a couple of them over the years. I've yeah. just never taken the plunge and, and, well, and jumped in. A big part of that is, is that I'm a very big. Uh, yeah, yeah. This is you know, three, four, five mapper games out there. This is a one mapper. This is a one mapper. I'm pretty sure it was just one counter sheet. It may have been two with the admin counters. Right. But, it but is, you have like 30 counters on the board at once. Yeah. It's not is, a big... All, you've got all of these... Yep. This is the rest of the American units. It's under the three formations. Yep. Like it, it is not an overwhelming, overwhelming game. Your stacking limit is basically two combat units. Mm -hmm. You can have a couple of other ancillary units in there, but you don't have many of those. Uh, and then you've got your, you know, a couple counters and bits and pieces. So, you know, your biggest stacks on the board four, are going to be five, six or seven, six, yeah. right? But that's like the biggest, and there won't yeah. be many of those ones. No. Most of it is two counters. Well, and, and this game really separates from, you know, the operational scale, you'll see the line of units, right? The zigzag formations that are all touching each other to to hold up, right? This is not that case. This is, well, you have a little bit of that. It, it's a little more open. Yeah, it's your more maneuver, fluidity. Yeah, yeah, you're maneuvering around, trying to cut things off and shrink it down. Um, so yeah, it, it's just kind of that mid-level scale. But yeah, you've, you've also got the, the zones of control at this level. So your units aren't necessarily, it's not a, a solid line of units. They're a no, bit more no. spread out yeah. at times. Probably more akin to the uh, 4X series from GMT. Yeah, Salerno yeah. 43, Normandy 44. It's, especially this title. I yeah, don't know yeah. about the other ones, maybe. Right. But this one has very few units. I think we're just trying to give a comparison to some yeah. other war games that we have played and experienced and and see how this one is. But yeah, this game has uh, a significant focus, I would say, on your your command and control of your different formations. Mm -hmm. Cause that's, that's the hallmark of yeah, it, that's, I, I think. The, the formation is like, that's what you activate. So you're looking at you know a, a particular brigade... 
or a particular cavalry group. Mm -hmm. That's what you're activating. And so you've got an HQ, and you've got a number of battalions within that, uh, you know, Panzer Division or whatever it is. And from there, you're then moving those units. Yeah. But it's a it's kind of a, I activate a formation, you activate a formation, mm -hmm. I activate a formation. And so your command, you have a... And you choose the formations you activate. Yes. It's not like a chip pull or a random draw. It's you, you kind of choose. Yeah. Therefore, initiative becomes, I think, very it's important, important, particularly, at, you know, when, when it gets tight. When you're trying to maintain your command control, plug holes, it does become very, very important. And before you poo-poo it for being a, a, an I go, you go type thing, oh, why isn't it a chip yeah. ball formation? Because the, the level of kind of randomness or the chaos factor comes once you've chosen your formation to activate. Mm -hmm. You, you roll snap this snafu roll. And we all know what that yeah. stands for. And What does it stand for? It stands for Situation Normal... All, All fudged up. Yeah, there you go. Uh, but I, I knew what it stood for. I wanted yes. to hear you say it. No, yeah. Uh, I like I like Google money, so I'm not going to say it. <laughs> uh, but basically... Um, or FUBAR, you know. Yes. FUBAR's another one I... That's also to. a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this, but basically you're going to make this roll mm -hmm. on, a, on a little table, and it's 2d6, not 1d6. Two D six. One D six. We did for the first what two you, turns. You only make that game? mistake once. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 look. Oh my gosh! It says modified two dice. Yes. Yeah, it's very small up there. I don't, I don't know how sure we how missed that. that. Well, up. the two is highlighted even. Uh, it emboldened. It's, it's emboldened. Not good. Yeah. Well. But uh, basically, <laughs> you roll your two D six, and there is a bunch of modifiers. Yeah. And all of those modifiers come from formation fatigue, yep. from your uh, combat train l supply logistics, from your command confusion from being mixed with other formations, from uh, all sorts of different things, yeah. but all of them come as a result of your command status, basically. Mm -hmm. Your logistics, how, what kind of good order that you're in. And Cro Crossing streams was another. Yeah. And not crossing streams as in the nuclear... No, as in but... two people at your rhino trying real hard. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like... <laughs> but <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but like... The... Th that's where that level comes because you're going to roll those dice and yeah. there's three possible outcomes. One of them is you totally... Do nothing. It's the it's yeah. the, uh, the fudged up end of snafu yep. Yep. where you basically can do nothing. Uh, I, I mean, it's like, interesting if, if you could see... Sorry. Yeah. If you could see this little oh. table here. It's pretty far away, but... Right here on the on the left is the totally L lots foobar. Lots of red. Lots of red. Not you good. can't do any of that. So and then you're and then screwed. The other end of the spectrum is all green. You can do whatever you want. You can put out two different objective markers, all that kind of stuff. Or then, kind of mid, then, yeah, half movement, half movement, half barrage, yeah. rounded down. Only one objective. Yeah, and it's like it's pretty good, but you won't be as effective. Right. And so that's where that level comes in because you might, oh, I'm gonna pick this. I get to go first. I'm gonna pick this formation to activate. Because I've got to do this stuff. Yeah. You roll those dice and it comes up uh, as two and you're like, Bleh. Well, and, and that happened. Yeah. I think it happened to me once. I think it happened to you at least once. Yeah. And it, it doesn't feel good, but it, it kind of, like you were trying to say, takes the place of that that random chip draw. Yeah, because a random chip draw, you're like, I pull the chips and it's like, cool, I pulled something totally useless. And yeah. that's fun and cool, but this one, you're, it's modifiers to a die roll and all of those modifiers are things that Base, happened yep. because you pushed your units too far yeah. or you mixed them up or you you You're really given fatigued. them a time to recover yeah. all of those things were usually somewhat in your control or as mm -hmm. a result of something that you did or was done to you yeah. and so it feels like it's more, more it simulates something a bit more realistic in that way yeah and i really enjoyed that part of it I thought that was really cool. Well and i and i think you were hitting the nail on the head in my opinion what that does well it's the as a commander, you're trying to mitigate the, the negative effects of fatigue and, and loss and, you know, loss of momentum, even loss of communication. You're trying to mitigate that by not pushing, pushing your troops hard, but not hard enough to, to break them. Yeah. And, and that's what And give happens. them an opportunity to recover. Yeah. And, and uh. there were a couple of times where you just had to say, you know what, I, that snafu roll, I have no chance of making it because I'm... I got three fatigue here. Yeah. I, I'm going to go ahead and say timeout. 
we're going to take this moment. I'm not going to roll. That means I can't do anything else except recover one of those fatigues. Yeah. And then I think you can flip your... Uh, you, can, you can flip your ghost... Your baggage train or combat train. Or combat so so I, it, you're right. It's, it's, a, it's a mitigating factor in that I go, you go... Yeah, it makes it sort of a boy. It makes yeah, it yeah. interesting, but also zhuzhes it up. It's meaningful. Yes, the, the, it's not just like oh, I randomly pulled and I got something crappy. Like yeah. it's like yeah, you rolled crappily, but that's because of this stuff that you yeah. can see and that you helped to make. Well, and the concept of that roll anyway is is very tension filled. I <laughs> yeah. I was on the edge of my seat more often than not because if I won the initiative and I really want, I wanted that formation to go because I had a reason. And, oh, crap, it didn't work. You, it it yeah, was very... You've got to get through your snap yeah. rolls. It's while while it hurt like heck, that was interesting. I, yeah. I, I liked it. And and I'm not a huge fan of I go, you go, because it... I don't know. It's just... It's like, I took my turn. Well, go ahead, good sir. I'm going to tip my hat to you and allow you to do whatever the yeah, hell you it, want to. It, it's That's a little not, bit predictable. It's a little bit yeah. gaming. Chit pull is always very cool. Random activation is always very cool. And, frankly, this system, how it attacks that and integrates that into the... It's, it's very cool. In, in fact, we talked a lot about this, just how unique it felt, how yeah. fresh it felt. And this is the fifth game in the series. We just haven't played any yet. No, no, ones. yeah. But, you know, we'll, we'll rectify that. Well, we have one on our shelf, and I know there's others that I've looked at. So the, the other thing about that activation system that I really enjoyed and the was the uh, the blob concept right and that wasn't necessarily the activation but it was the formations yes, and that is the technical that term. is actually the term that they use it's not a made-up term but that blob yeah. in essence is a i like to look at it as a triangle of your three or four units in that formation how they intersected and the area of the map that they kind of took yeah up. it's it basically your formation you draw kind of a circle from your outermost yeah. units or whatever, like a, a smooth shape is what they say. Yeah. And it's like, that's your area of operation, so mm -hmm. to speak. And if you have other formations coming that into that... bleed into that, It's yeah. literally called mixing, and you take negative yep. modifiers. And it's not good. You're, you, yeah, you start taking these... Because if, if you're mixing, you're going to miss that snafu roll, because that's, I think, negative one. Yeah, mixed mix, formations. Mixed formations, negative one. I, I think the coordination marker is also a negative one, and that was the one... Well, that was a loss. Well, yeah, I you, got you pushed got back from and HQ's having to retreat. But yeah, I, I, I don't know. That... To me, tied with the activation system, really created, I thought, a very unique take on the command and control. Yeah. And also, while I've never been on a battlefield, I think it probably replicates, in some ways, the difficulties there. I, I will never be able to test out that theorem. I, I'm, I'm not going to be on a battlefield, but kind of unique. It just I think it dealt with those issues well, in a very unique way. If you think about other games, I think about something like Holland 44, for example... Mm -hmm. Where, especially at the beginning of the game, it's got those big red dotted lines up. Yes, it and does. You have to stay in your lanes. Yep. You cannot. So move a lot of war games have area those. operations. Here it's just fl it's more fluid though. Yes. I move my formation. This is kind of where they're setting up. This but, is my pick picket line. But isn't that a condition of the scale of the game, right? To an extent, yes. That Holland Forty Four game is a more operational scale. Uh, uh, also, what what. Uh, Salerno 43. It that had also, lines that on also had that too. It, it had, had lines, lines on, the on, the, on, the, so, on the east. Because this is a smaller scale, the way they deal with that is the blob concept. But there's, a, you know, there's plenty of games where they're like, this army can't go below this line. Yeah. Whereas this just gives you the freedom to set up those lines, so to yeah. speak. But also, instead of just saying, you can't cross this area of operations, you, you can, but there's a penalty for it. Because at this yeah. scale, like you said... That then, you know, oh, I've got some random other company driving in, and, and all your little NCOs on the ground like, who's that? Yeah. Right? What's Parker on and the so, west? And then desperately you know, on the radio say, like, yeah. oh, what's what are you doing? On? Who are these guys? Well, we don't, we don't have, you know, battalion net to those guys. Well, that, that's in that how friendly fire kind of happens. Yeah. You, you, you see somebody coming in out of your peripheral, and you, you kind of shoot them because you're not sure who they are. Yeah. I, so, I, it's a neat, yeah. It's, so it's, it's really fun because it makes the maneuvering aspect of this very important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, a hallmark of this game is that the units are dual-sided. 
They kind of have a movement side and a deployed side. Very similar to OCS. Yeah. OCS does that as well. Movement side, you have really big movements, mm -hmm. but your action rating is much smaller usually. Deployed side, your movement yeah, rating is, trying, you know, yeah. cut in half, usually a third, maybe even smaller. But your action rating, which affects combat, is usually better. Yeah. As well as your armor values for armor units as well. This, well. this is an interesting unit because this is one of those... Uh, that's a dual unit. A dual unit. I was trying to. I was just trying. When you were saying that, I was like, "Oh yeah." Well, so, their combat factor didn't change a whole lot. The 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 armor ones, no. But yeah. the, usually the action rating is usually. Oh, that one is the same. Yeah, it's it's it, almost, this one's the same too. Four, my, four, almost four, all, four. all of my own were like three and then a two or a okay. three and a four. And I think my infantry are more M like most that. of them are because you know it's yeah. And so you, you're now here are these engineers. and you can only flip those before yeah a they two move. a two versus a one. So you're like you're yeah. you're trying to figure out which side you want to maneuver on and then you're moving your formation but mm -hmm. making sure that you're not like blocking up or like cross pollinating yeah. with other formations to keep in trying to still trying to keep your battle line intact yeah and a lot of the times this mixing happens when you're forced to retreat into like yeah. disadvantageous places because you're like great i have to kind of go and we're gonna mm -hmm. mix up and people are very confused yeah i just the things that this game focuses on is very interesting and also and like it's very different I felt yeah. from a lot of the other things that we play. Yeah. Because combat is... Combat well, was also very unique. It's your action rating mm -hmm. plus a series of modifiers, and you subtract from that the defender's action rating. Yeah, net, plus attacker, a DR, of modifiers. net attacker DRM minus net defender DRM. And then you get a final net DRM, and you just 2d6 plus or yep. minus whatever that DRM is, and that's the results. Yeah. So there's no combat factors and... Uh, you know, odds ratios in a CRT, it, it it kind of puts all that away. You still focus on a lot of the things that you would in games yeah. like that. Yeah. You know, you've got your you know, assault unit, and they might have a support unit with them. You might have a unit adjacent that's an assisting assault unit, and you'll but those just give you modifiers. Yeah. So you still want to get your unit composition and positioning correct from your maneuvering, but it's not. That aspect of it isn't a crispy, crunchy get out my calculator. No, it, it, thing, it's which was nice. More simple, but the reality is, while this looks totally different than a normal CRT, in essence, if you turn everything like this, yes, you got your little bell a, curve. It's a CRT, so it, it's just a different form of a CRT. I, I will say this, and that was something we your first four or five attacks as the Germans, yes. We debated amongst ourselves, is, is this even worthwhile? Most, most of them were not. Most of them were not. You were a negative two or a negative three on almost every one of those. You're rolling 2d6 at a negative two or a negative three. Your best result was an attacker loses one, and maybe the defender has to retreat if they're not in a, de in a prepared yeah. defense. So it, I, I mean, these are brutal. They really are yeah, brutal, and they make you think about it a You lot. have to have positive modifiers to attack, oh, unless no doubt. you're desperate. And so trying to set those up is very important. Yep. If if defenders are holed up in terrain, you're, it encourages you, because attacking into that... It is a you, negative You're almost one. always going to lose. How many times did you attack up a hill? Because you had to. Yeah. Right? And so... But that was what, awesome. What that means is, is that... The game's telling you probably shouldn't do that. Yeah, exactly. You Find a way to maneuver around them. Surround them. Surround them. They'll, isolate they'll them. They'll take isolation yeah. losses, which will force them to attack out, which is probably yep. going to be bad for them as well. And, and that send a relieving force. Yep. Which that is, that kind of happened here. You 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 surrounded this guy, one of my better units, frankly, a tank unit that had a attack value of a five, um, or an action value of a five. You surrounded it. I, I started to take attrition. I'm like, oh crap. I, I got. I mean, didn't have many there. steps. You're like, oh. no. I, I got. I got to get down there. I got to relieve that guy. I did like how steps didn't affect that action rating. Yes, because they're tracked a little differently. That that was unique. Um, but it's 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 also because the counters look a little bit different to some other war games. But the things that are on there are very important. Very interesting. You're looking. Oh, this is a six step infantry unit. They can be isolated for a couple of yes. turns. My little one or two step armor unit, eh, not so much. What we, did you? We have to break them out very quickly. We, we never really. You didn't have to fight much. I mean, look at that six step and four attack factors. That that's pretty brutal. Yeah, like that guy was pretty good. Yeah, that was Patton right there. I think wiping guys out 
uh, for some of these big units can be very difficult. Very hard. Yeah. But you know, but I think more than anything, it's forcing people into retreat into bad situations, so that they start failing their snafu rolls. Yeah. Then that, that's they what can this, be as good as they yep. want to be. Can't do anything. Can't do anything. And that was that was a that was something I think we caught on fairly early. We're like. Oh, I, I can't make that snafu roll. I'm going to have to decide to do something else. Yeah. Like we said, recover, you know, because then that snafu roll becomes less likely and to every, fail. Every time that amazing 35th Panzer Brigade or whatever isn't attacking, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm winning, winning. Right. I'm like, winning. Every, every yep. time he's recovering, You're right. I'm doing a You're good right. job. The, the other thing I thought that the design did very well fr from the different use of terrain, terrain is not a normal column shift or a, uh, it, it's just one of those negative one modifiers. So yes. it, it was very different. I, I liked that. It only t attacking across certain hex sides, like up a hill yeah. or across a stream. Like that's a negative one. And if there is a penalty to if, if, like, if there's any terrain, it's also a minus one. Yeah. Like it's really simple. Very simple. It's not like, Oh, the forest's a minus two and yeah. there's an artillery penalty or the yep. mountains are minus four. It just really small... simplified. Yeah. That. It's, that's not the focus. It's Streamlined. Like, is there terrain? Yes or no? Yeah. It, it is really it. Yeah. The, the other thing I thought that was very unique was the weather and, and, and every turn started with a weather roll. Yep. You roll a D six. There's only three different types. It's clear foggy or rainy, those determine a lot of things. They determine how many air points the Americans have. They determine how far away you can spot units. During a good clear weather, your your barrages are going to be way more effective because you have four hexes, whereas during fog, it's you got to be right up next to someone to use that spotting ability for a barrage. Rain, I, in fact, we never rolled rain, which I thought was interesting. It's a one or a two. <laughs> That's just pure luck. But it, it, it has bad visibility, uh, reduces, uh, I think it was Your movement. Your traffic ability, yeah. Yep. So I, v very interesting, I thought, how weather was used. Um, I'm not sure I've really come across a lot of systems that do it that way. No. Some we, of the bulge games we, we've played or, have. Or I think about the Dark Summer. That The way yeah. that, that used weather was, was very cool. Yep. But, th yeah, this one is... Be because your spotting is something that's like done not in an abstract yeah. way. Here's my spotting unit. He's X amount of hexes away. Yeah. That X amount of hexes is dependent on the weather. If yeah. it's foggy, it's not very many. If it's a good day, it's a lot more. It's four, yeah. And, so, and, and one kilometer per hex, you can see four kilometers yeah, away. Four yeah, kilometers, makes sense. Yeah, a little bit of a rise, got some binoculars. What is four kilometers? See. About two and a half miles? Yeah, a little bit less maybe. Maybe, yeah, 2.2 .2 miles maybe. Anyway, um... Very unique. I liked that a lot. Um, yeah. as, as well as the train. I, I And the, the snafu, the weather, and I thought the command and control activation were, were, were the three things about this system that I just really, really enjoyed. Yeah. What I will do is I will very briefly show you some of how this works. There are some much better in-depth video tutorials out there. But I'll hopefully give you a bit kind of an overview. Yeah. And then we'll wrap up with a few final thoughts. So, here's a look at the map. Uh, it's it's a 22 by 34. I've got it kind of zoomed in on this half because we played one of the uh, smaller scenarios. So I've got it under a plexi with uh, this separate sheet, which is the time tracker and has some uh, different charts and tables on it as well, including the weather. But uh, you'll... So, you know it's on the board, but one of the things you will be looking at a lot is this bifold um, play aid, this dual sided. So the front of it's got your kind of turn sequence, and then this little activations phase, this is what a normal activation looks like. Sometimes uh, you will have a failure activation if you cock up your snafu roll, or if you, uh, you'll you have a recovery uh, activation if that's what you're doing. And there's a lot of attack sequence down here as well, but this is kind of going to guide you. So you're going to read the rolls, just set it up, and then kind of start walking through this and reference those sections in the rule book as you kind of go through it is what I would recommend doing. Inside here you'll have charts and tables so you've got your combat table with all the modifiers, your barrage table, not really any modifiers on that, your engagement table if you're doing kind of passing engagements, your snafu table where these are the results, this is your table, these are your modifiers for it, uh, and then your retreat execution if you're if you're doing that. 
and then the back of it, uh, you've got uh, you've got your things that make you stopped or finished, which are, have different game effects, uh, and then just a couple of different aids for different situations or things that might come up in the game. A little isolation table as well. So you will use that a lot, but basically uh, you're going to roll for weather, and your weather might be rainy, foggy, or good. That's going to have different effects on. Um, range or line of sight for spotting units. You're going to have then uh, any kind of different replacements that come in. You're going to put reinforcements ready to come on the board. Just kind of all this kind of pre-turn stuff that you might usually imagine. A lot of that stuff's fairly standard. Um, then you're going to start going into um, your kind of activation cycle, is what I will call it. And there's optional rules that you can use for putting formations into certain orders, but we're not advanced enough to do that. Basically, you're going to roll off for initiative to who goes first. The first turn it's always set, and after that you just roll off to see who goes first. And what you're going to do is you're going to consult. You'll have these um, kind of formation activation chits. And they're not mixed up or anything like that. You're just going to choose which one that you want to do. So the Americans, let's say, they're going to choose to do um, these guy here. CCR so of the 4th Army. And so you're going to activate everyone who's got a red stripe on it. Great. So normally your HQ looks like this. This is its unused side. As soon as you activate that formation, this first activation is free. You kind of flip it over to its used side. And we will kind of put this out here. I'm going to put it this way just so that you can see it. And so during an activation, you're going to go through all of this stuff. So uh, the f you flip it over to its used side. Then what you're going to do is you're going to kind of assess the situation. So you're going to look at your combat train. And you're going to think about this as your kind of um, supply running units that are bringing munitions and, you know, food, forces, or orders, things like that. This is bringing you supplies from your supply points off map. Oh, I don't know if you can see that. There's a supply point at the edge of the map. So you're looking at this. Is this supposed to be where it is? So your line has to go HQ, uh, combat train, supply point. In that order. Uh, if it's on its ghosted side, that's less good, but we'll get to that here in a second which this is usually if it's moved, basically, or if it's not optimally positioned. Is this in place? This gives you an MSR, a main supply route. Uh, if you can get that done, then uh, you're in a good spot. Eventually, you're going to check a couple bits and pieces. You're going to uh, adjust any um, support units that you might want to assign, things like that. And then, before you move anything, you're going to then roll on the all-important snafu table, which we had talked about here. So, whilst you check all this stuff, that's important because those provide modifiers to your snafu roll. Your snafu roll, you're rolling 2d6 and you're trying to get a 7 or more, ideally. Because a 7 or more gives you a full activation. A 3 through 6 gives you a partial activation, and a 2 or less, which is possible and happens more than you would want it to, gives you a failure activation. If you kind of look down at this chart briefly, Grant tried to show you, failure activation, lots of red, not good. Full activation, lots of green. Very good. Partial activation, somewhere in between. So, uh, you're going to roll your 2d6, and you're hoping to get a 7 or more. We're going to roll our 2d6. We rolled a 10. That's very good. So we're going to do a 10. You're going to subtract from that your fatigue marker. Our fatigue markers are 2, so currently we're an 8. We're going to subtract any coordination markers we have. We do not have any for the red formation. Um, we are going to sub subtract from that... Um, Nothing else there. No game-specific ones. Optimal distance for our MSR. So, and this is what we talked about earlier, the optimal distance is anywhere from 5 to 15 hexes away from your HQ while still being on your MSR. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Perfect. For optimal distance, so that's plus 1, so back to a 9. If he was a ghost train, he'd be there, that'd be a minus 1, so it's not. We're not crossing any streams. We have good trafficability because we're in the good weather part of the table. So that's good. Uh, so that's a, 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 a only a minus one instead of a minus two. So we're, we're down to an eight again. 
and uh, we don't have, and so because our MSR is complete, we don't we ignore those last ones. So we rolled a nine, that's a pass, we have a full activation. Great. If you roll really poorly, you've got a five, and you've got some negatives from your fatigue, you're gonna start getting into your partials and your fails. It's very easy to do that if you're not taking care. So, having done that, we get a full activation. So we're gonna flip back over to the front, and we're gonna kinda of go through all of the different activation stuff in these steps. So what can you do? Well, our little table of results tells us what we can do. Uh, we get two objective markers. And these objective markers, you're gonna put them out and they have a two hex radius where you can perform attacks, where you can take victory hexes, things like that. So you have to kind of, so why that's important is, oh, I can go over here and I can put this kind of over here and I can do a bunch of attacks up here, great. But if you only get a partial, you can get one of those. So what if you needed to do a bunch of attacks up here, but you also wanted to do some attacks down here? Well, you can't, because you only got one objective marker. So again, th there's little bits and pieces like that limit the things that you can do. You can't just go ham on all of this stuff, especially if you have bad rolls. So you get a couple of objective markers that you put out. There's no limitations on the barrages that you can do with your air points and artillery points. You can move your full movement allowance. You can in initiate any attacks that you want. And that's what you're going to do. You're going to kind of move guys around, you're going to flip them over from their movement to their deployed sides, and you're going to kind of play a war game, basically. So this guy, uh, he is a, I think he's a uh, mechanized infantry unit. He's got 16 movement points, and he has this white assault arrow. That means he's capable of initiating an attack. And this little four in between is his action rating. That's his kind of base combat modifier. That's good. So 16 movement points is great. Uh, so you could move him 16 hexes if they're all open hexes. Or you could flip him over. Well, that's not a good example. Uh, and then he can only move four hexes. Uh, but his, in his hexes at that point, oh, his movement is leg movement. Uh, but a lot of the times when you deploy them to this deployed side, you get a better, um, a better, what is it called? Action rating. This little four often changes. So these, for example, this little combat engineer has a one action rating on his movement side. If you flip him over, he's a two. His, his attacks get more effective, basically. But so you can only flip at the beginning or like prior to movement. You can't flip after you move. So you can't run a guy 16 spaces and then flip him on a defensive, basically. So you're gonna move your hexes, move around a whole bunch. Your your command uh, range is something you have to pay very close attention to because if you go beyond your command range, you then s s you know cease to be combat effective. So you you're trying to keep your um, keep your HQs up near your units, but kind of away from the front lines, because if those get attacked and disrupted, that's also very bad. But moving dudes around, if you want to initiate combats, you can do that. A combat is simply, here, let's get a couple units together. Let's say I've got this German unit, and I got these two um, infantry, motorized infantry units. So if I'm doing an attack, my base number is a two, and his base number is a three, and you are then simply going to follow all of the different combat modifiers on here. So I've got, uh, if I'm a, if I'm a, if we're common, you've got dual or support units. None of us are dual units. Uh, we have, don't have MSRs blocked. So let's say I've got one objective point out on him, but not two. Don't get any modifiers there. So I've got one unit, and I've got one unit assisting. That's a plus one. So I've got a three total. And the defender doesn't have any prepared defense. There's no hex side terrain. There's no in hex terrain. So it's just their three. And it's their three and my three. And they cancel each other out. You do a, a subtraction. So you're going to roll 2d6. And it's a straight 2d6. Great. You roll a five. A five is abysmal. I would do an A1. An attacker takes a loss. So if you look on here... This tiny little yellow six in a square at the top of the counter, that's the number of steps that this has. So I take a loss, 
I get this little marker and I put the five facing up, that's how many steps that I have. Five. Now, had I done it on the reverse side, I would have been a three, so I would have had a five, that would have gone to a six, still would have been bad, but getting guys on the right side to initiate attacks on subsequent turns is very important. But you're going to do moves, you're going to do attacks, you might do a prepared defense, which gives you some limitations, but some good defensive bonuses, things like that, but you're constrained in other ways. And you're going to do all of that. Once you're done with that, you do a little bit of cleanup, you remove all your objective markers, and then you have the, you, you have the capacity to uh, try to reactivate and do a second activation with these guys. When you do a second activation, you roll a, a, a d6, and you're trying to roll uh, equal to or higher than this four dice pip number up here. So we fail, so we don't do it again. Uh, the other thing that I had forgotten is uh, you can you gain more fatigue with things that you do. So you look up here, um, if you put, go through an attack sequence, you initiate an attack, you might gain uh, fatigue. Uh, if you do a second activation successfully, you might gain fatigue. What you do is you make a fatigue roll. So we did an attack, so we'll just roll for fatigue here. On a one, two, or three, you gain one fatigue. So we will gain one fatigue. We were already at two, that's not good. We go to three. And remember, that, that three is now a negative three to my snafu rolls. It's a negative three uh, to my second activation roll. So now it's impossible for me on a d6 to roll above a four. Uh, so, you've got to be very careful about how and what you do all of those things as you push your units. Now, this red one, next next round, I might do a recovery activation, where that's going to reduce from a 3 to a 2. But the Germans also know that I'm probably going to do that. So they might re relieve some pressure here, knowing that you are not you ain't going to do anything, and they might push somewhere else. V very interesting back-and-forth mechanics, but you're basically doing that, but you're making sure that you are within range of your combat train. You don't outstretch your supplies, because if this is on its positive side and it's in optimal range, you get a plus one to your snafu roll. You're trying to reduce your fatigue, so you can't just attack, 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 attack like you can in every other war game. Everything has to be managed. You do an attack with these guys. You do an attack with the guys next in the line. You recover with these guys. You maybe attack over here. Now these guys are ready to perform another attack. You do it in increments instead of just kind of blasting one strong unit the whole way across the map, which I think is a real big credit to the game. But that's kind of a very brief overview of what this game is. There's a lot more to it, and it's pretty intense, but that's how this game kind of functions. What we'll do is we'll wrap up with a few final thoughts. So that was a look at the map in the game. Uh, I had a great time playing this. I, for a first time with a system, yes. this was really a good time, frankly. Yeah. Very, very good. It was, it was, so, you know, the rule book, this is version two of the series rules that you get in it. Pretty dense. It is a, I mean, the page count's technically 48. However, yeah. a significant number of that is indices and a glossary and all sorts of helpful stuff. So the actual rules that you will use is about 35 pages. And why and, is that still a lot? <laughs> well, and, and I thought this player aid, while it is very crowded, I mean, it is a double-sided bifold. Yeah. Uh, it, very good. Boy, look at that crease already. Did you crease this one? Or was this mine? Uh, I was folding mine back and forth. Okay. Probably. But there's a lot of good information here. There's also yeah. specific... Like, here's isolation, 3.6. So I yeah, I always like it when they do that because it makes these complex, crunchy games way more playable because you can refer to the rules much, much quicker. And they also have a series support book. Both of these, the, no, 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 the 2.0 rules, they're from 2021. Mm -hmm. so the most up-to-date set that you have, and they're also full color, which is nice. Uh, the support book, kind of start by reading this. This gives you kind of a a high-level overview of what the game's trying to do, some of the core concepts and why some of the things were abstracted in the way that they were. And you just kind of dive into the rules, mm -hmm. give them a read, but very quickly you want to just set units up and start going through the sequence of play and just pushing them around. Yeah. That's how you want to learn this game, is by doing it. And frankly, that's how we did it, right? Yep. You, you did review the rule book beforehand, but I'm not sure you dove into it Well, it's because, because some of it's very different from some yeah. of the things that we were doing. It's we, hard to see it. We had to experience it yeah. to see it. And I, I've been a big believer of that with a lot of these systems is 
you just got to push counters around. You, yeah. you know, you're going to make mistakes, yes. In fact, we always say these first plays, I, I don't care competitively. No, no. I, what happens? I, I mean, we it, we played it out to a conclusion. Play any game. Even no. if I know the rules in a system, knowing the tactics, it's like, this right. isn't, no one's bragging about this. Right. But I, I, I think going through the, the steps, I thought the sequence of play was pretty good. Um, while there were a lot of questions I had by well, yeah. following it. There's a, there's a lot of steps. Yep, there are a lot of things steps. to follow, but all of that is referenced in the rule book. And you just, yeah. th- that first turn, just do it piece by piece, go yep. through it, go through it. And that's what we did, Some right? Some of the we... stuff you're like, yeah, don't need to do that, don't need yep. to do that, don't need to do that. And then you're like, cool, let's go. I, I will say this, there was a funny moment when we when we started the game. You went first, you won the initiative, I yes. think the first one. Well, yeah, you start with the Germans. Right. Start with the you, you had, did you have two formations on the board, or was it just the one? I think it was just the one. Just the one the first turn. So you're going through it, you're rolling your snafu roll, and you're like all excited. Yeah, oh yeah. And you roll those dice, and I, I, I swear you rolled like I double failed. ones. It was nothing, yeah. Yeah, and so you're like, oh, uh, great, Grant, it's your turn. And I'm sitting there going, what? Yeah. I was I was hoping to learn from you. I was hoping to like, what, do something. Yeah. And what, I'm like, what am I supposed to do here, Alexander? So we... That was interesting, but I, I think even with that, I was able to fairly quickly pick it up, understand what I was trying to do. Now it comes down to the strategic side of it. And I, I made that comment. We made several blunders, both no. of us, um, particularly with the mixing or the commingling and the command and control. I made some errors there. But the best way to learn these games, I think, brief over the rules, watch a quick video, and then... Just jump yeah. in. You this got to jump in. This one, you want to see some of it playing out. Because this is going to yeah. talk about your combat train and your optimal distances between your HQ and your supply that's points always, and stuff. That optimal distance thing and your and your combat train, that's just such a unique... Yeah. Now, now, I know OCS does that, right? When Gary gave us a tutorial of OCS, that was something... What did, what did they call that? I'm trying... Extenders. Yes. Yeah. But, but with that... Those things are very precise. Yes, you 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 ha- you're putting it this and this. This space is a away little more open, so that it can throw this amount of spaces. Right, you need to measure that stuff. You do. Yeah, this is like, hey, you have this like all these combat supplies coming in. Yeah, and for it to work as efficiently as possible, you, need to you want it to have route. a certain distance away. Yep, and that mimics that it's doing what it's supposed to do. But mm-hmm. hey. You can't leave it totally unprotected. Right. So, like, it helps you to set things up a little bit more realistically. Yeah. Which I think is very interesting without being too punitive well, it, and, it, and crunchy. It, and I liked OCS. I enjoyed that. This is the OCS light in that respect, in yeah, that regard. Absolutely. Supply is a big part of it. Protecting those combat trains, very, very important. In fact, early on, I was I was making some decisions because I, like, I, I can't leave that there. Or I can't move that there. Or I was consequently looking at you hoping, oh, just move to the right three hexes. Yeah. Because uh, I wanted to come back down. Yeah. You know. I got my 111th Panzer Brigade. And I'm yeah. like, I can't move these guys. Because this yep. will just get wiped. And then I'll be yep. cut off. And, and once again, you made that statement. Because of that, I was winning. Yes. Right? I, I was holding. I think you had some pretty good units in there. Yeah. Or even if they were okay. Yeah. They're not I doing was anything them. Yep. proactive. They're they just, were not attacking. Yeah. Yep. Because you really because if I don't lost them, yep, there's your baggage train. Yep. So uh, any war game I think that doesn't deal with with supply in some way, shape, or form is a not always a failure, but it it is something that you should have in mind. Yeah. This one I think is the mid level between say an OCS yeah, and, and a normal well, game. You're that, not counting supply points. No. It's just a positioning thing. Yes. Which is a really clean and easy way to do it and yeah. to manage it, which I yeah. appreciate. Yeah. I, who is the series designer for this? Does it's it Dean Essig. Okay, so Dean, he does all their great games, right? I, yes. I would love to talk to him one time. Not that I'm ever going to be able to talk to him, but talk about that, you know, SCS, BCS, OCS... The thinking in the creation of all three of those systems and really what his audience and intention intentions were. I, I think that would be an interesting... Yeah. Maybe we ought to reach out and see if he'd be willing to do that. And but, I think this is the youngest of the series. There's only five titles in it. I don't know if it's yeah. age-wise the youngest, because the first one could have been 30 years ago. Yeah, right. But I'm not sure. I think this is the smallest of those series. Yeah. But it's... It, it's 
it's one of those things that I think people are like, oh, OCS, big scary supply game. And they're like, oh, SCS, really good intro level game. Almost of those. no real true supply. There's a little bit, but no, well, nothing and, real crunchy. Or it varies. Some yeah. games do, some games, mm, not really. Yeah. And, uh, and this is kind of somewhere in between, and I'm like, man, this is a really great entry point into this series, because yeah. it's not an overwhelming game. Mm -hmm. But there is, so this is a great space to learn it in. One map, two counter sheets, only one of those is units. Fits on anyone's table, yeah. and you can learn and play this, and then if that's something that you're interested in, which I think you might be after you play this, yeah. you're going to parlay that into some of those bigger games, yeah. take a bit of time over those as well. Uh, but I, I don't know, I feel like those two series get kind of all the spotlight, and this one, I've had it for a while, and I'm so glad we finally played it, because I'm like, there's a lot of merit here. Yeah. A lot, and it's a well, lot to like. This is actually a game that we pre-ordered last year. Yeah, so in and, 2021, and the last year, yeah. And I think we had the discussion, not only is the cover absolutely gorgeous, but we've always been interested in the series, and this was, was sold, right, as a one-map, and more introductory, and we're like, hey, let, let's order that. So we yeah. pre-ordered it, and we almost kind of forgot about it until like in April. <laughs> the package we, showed up, and yeah. I had no idea what it was because right. I had forgotten that we did yeah. that. And I was like, oh, oh, what on earth is this? What, what a great surprise, like, though. Oh yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm really glad we played this. This is a 2022 release. I'm gonna be honest. I mean, it, it's early in the year. We've played about a dozen 2020. This one's gonna definitely be in. I think my top ten. Yeah, and I don't know if we've mentioned this. This is a game that you could solo pretty easily. Yeah. You, you know, you're not allowed to inspect enemy stacks. But you're so not going to remember it anyway. In so. doing so, you will forget because yeah. you can't look. And, and But you know what? There's no referee. Sure. Looking over you. Who cares? Sure. Just play the game for the interesting system, the interesting experience. Who cares if... If you can't inspect... Look at the stacks. But Try to understand the no game. There's no reason you couldn't solo no. this. Right? No, no. Like, yeah, absolutely. The hidden information is a stat. It's not like a yeah, hand of it's, cards it's fairly, that you have to try and forget. Yeah, you can see the top unit. There's one or two units underneath it, basically. Yeah. But at like the most. One other combat unit. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's... So, this would be a really great way to sit and learn and push stuff around. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah. I, I'm, I've got Brazen Chariots. I want to I want to learn so, it. I had bought Brazen Chariots because mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, I want to learn that system. I don't know how. In my brain, I had thought it was a two-map game. It's like five. And it showed up, and it was like, I think it's like four or oh. five. And I was like... Probably has like four counter sheets. Yeah, and I was like, oh no, what have I done? <laughs> I was like annoyed at myself. Yeah. I thought, oh, I'm going to get this like two-map kind of desert game. This would be yeah. really interesting. And I was like, this is too big to fail. Yeah, yeah. And I was disappointed because I really had wanted to learn it. Then they were like, yeah, do this. I'm like, this fits on the table. Thank goodness. Perfect timing. Done this. <laughs> Yeah, and I think S the SCS series, we kind of did the same thing with Rostov, right? Rostov oh, yeah. 41, it was, is that a two mapper or a one What's mapper? one mapper? It's a one mapper. We got it. We and got it off pre-order. It's very good. We learned that system. We've now enjoyed that system. We bought a couple more of those games in that system. I think you can see them. Yeah, they're, Maybe they're, they're all over there. there yeah. I, I've got a couple. You know, I, I think with BCS, we're going to do the same thing now. I, I think I admitted this in an earlier... We did like an immediate after play breakdown. Yeah. A new a new concept in videos for us where we just it was a streaming a stream of consciousness, right? We went back and forth, we asked questions, we talked a little bit about strategy, a little bit about what we liked, didn't like, what we learned, what we figured out. But but I remember during that I, I made a confession that I've kind of poo-pooed, frankly some of these series over the years because for me the production right i i these maps are pretty basic they're they're not i'm not going to say that's a gorgeous map it's not ugly but it doesn't but catch my the maps haven't changed over the last no they haven't years. some of the other companies that we play and we really like it's like ooh, that map's fantastic so i i've been caught i, I think judging a book by its cover these systems, these games, the concepts here are fantastic. I need to repent and and just give them more of an opportunity. I I want to try OCS. I want to play more SCS. I there's no doubt. I want to play more BCS. Yeah. So I, I've I've had my eyes opened. I uh, I really enjoy this. Yeah, that's my that's the way I feel. About and it. people will ask, 
why do I need another series of games? Or, I don't want to learn another series of yeah, games. Yeah, well... Which, because most people aren't insane people like us. Well, we're crazy. We, who play all the games. Yeah. And so they're like, well, I can only, I can only like, kind of really stick with one. Because mm -hmm. we've got space on a shelf for. And this is one that you should look into, I think. Yeah. Because it offers something very different uh, from yeah. a scale and uh, what you're doing it with. Yeah. And we tried it so that you don't have to, I guess. Well, I, part of that. I think one other comment I would have about this game. This is a game and a system that is much larger than just this box and this production. Yeah. This felt like a really big war game. Oh, yeah. In, no a, in a smaller package, one map, 30, 40 counters. I got a big, big yeah. feeling from it. It's it. It's got a great balance of being pretty intense, mm -hmm. but very fun. Yeah, very crunchy, but playable. Because and well, interesting. Any given moment of the game, you're activating one formation, yeah. which is about five or six counters. Yeah, but there's a lot of larger picture things you're trying to consider mm -hmm. and make sure you do this, that, and this. And there's some there's some crunch. There's some yeah. crunch. There's some bits that you have to try to think and remember, yeah. but. You're not you're not trying to do that for like sixty units at a time. It's a little small bit. I'm doing this. Yeah. I'm having a good time moving some units around, doing yep. attack, maybe two at and, most. And, and, and I then don't. You do a thing. Yeah. And then it comes back to me. Mm -hmm. And so it's not. I'm never. It was intense. A lot to kind of consider, but it wasn't like, oh, it's my turn, and I'm like, I've got to move the entire east front. Sure. It's not never daunting. Yeah. Yeah. Which, ne which never I really that liked about yeah. this because big rule book, lots of charts yeah. and tables. But you're just moving a little bit at a time. Yeah, and so you just and you just kind of do it. It's great. And there's nothing wrong with those big games. I mean, there we we like those big games. We just I have fat fingers. Yeah, you're clumsy as hell. We've we've had some trouble with those, right? <laughs> this one I think gives you the same feeling or a similar feeling in a in, in a more manageable yeah, space. Yeah, but if you want a rich system, the, yeah, when you're actually playing it mm -hmm. is very approachable. Mm -hmm. It's not... Once you get it down, very appropriate. Yeah, you're not like, i got to do the entirety of Barbarossa yeah. on my turn. You don't have yeah. to do that. Nope. It's, nope. I do a little bit, you do a little bit, I do a little bit, you do a little bit. And, yeah. and that's a merit to getting into a game and learning a new system without right. being overwhelmed. Yep. So, that was a lot. I understand. <laughs> so, yeah, that, this one's really good. This one's really LMP, good. Really a good. very cool system. Mm -hmm. Quite unique. Mm -hmm. Uh... At the time of recording, this is not available on Noble Knight's website because it's sold out because everyone's yeah. bought it. However, they do have some of the other titles. And, and my guess is give them a couple months, they'll... Because yeah. people buy these, they play them, they either don't play them or they play them and then they decide to sell them. So, so it's yeah. going to become available. Go, go on there, check out some of the other titles that yeah. they've got. Um, we appreciate them kind of sponsoring mm -hmm. us here at, at the Players' Aid. And we're very... I, I'm so glad that we got this played. I really am. Yeah, there's it, no doubt. I was... Yep. Not putting it off, but I'm like, this was an intense. What's well, a bigger? To it, learn. it feels like a bigger game. It, it really is. does. But it, it was very rewarding, and I know that I've also gained that knowledge of the system. Where I'm like, I could play way more of this. I can mm -hmm. play it now four or five other games in this series, which is a huge payoff for me because if I really like it, I'm like, yes, there's there's more and more and more for it, and and uh, that's a huge credit. I really enjoyed playing the system. I really Me enjoyed too. playing this game. But mm -hmm. the game was very interesting and some of the tactical situations were very cool. Yeah. Uh, so, BCS Aaron Court from MMP. Uh, check it out if you're interested. Appreciate you very much for tuning in. I've been Alexander from theplayersaid.com. And I'm Grant.